Do you know why? There's nothing more contagious than laughter. My line. There's nothing more contagious than laughter. These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm Vian Fuso. And in the past on this channel, I briefly spoke about Cameron Monaghan's portrayal of the Joker. He was without a doubt the best Joker we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Because he was everything. He brought that same energy and intensity to like this role that Mark Hamill does when he gets on the microphone. This kid understood the character probably better than anybody who's ever performed it before. And today, I'm here to expand upon that. Now, this video is being made right before I rewatch the entire Gotham series for other videos on this channel. This way, I can cover it in vivid detail. So, this video is being made up entirely from my own memory of watching the show the first time around. And also, what I may or may not have researched online. I say this now because there's a decent chance that eventually this topic will be brought up again on this channel. So, there you go. When Gotham first came out, all the promotions and trailers showcase some of the top villains in Batman's rogues gallery. You had the Pang one, the Riddler, and they even teased the possibility of Two-Face. Some of the biggest names in all of Batman lore. Though there was one that was suspiciously missing. Arguably Batman's greatest foe, and potentially could be seen as his driving factor, the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. None of the ads showed the Joker. At first, the character was left under a veil of mystery, but we were told that he existed in this canon to some degree. Now, initially, the showrunners publicly stated that the Joker would be heavily referenced throughout the show. As opposed to them just presenting the Joker, they were giving the power to the show's audience and allowing them to choose who they felt exemplified the Joker the best. It was basically the choose-your-own-adventure of Batman lore. You see, there wouldn't just be one direct Joker. Instead, there would be a bunch of minor characters created that could potentially become the Joker. And it was up to everybody watching to ultimately decide who the real deal was. And I actually really enjoyed that concept. It was an interesting and different way of portraying the Joker. And I think knowing the Joker character, it was a smart decision creatively as well. Because this Gotham was an origin story. We were learning about the younger lives of all of our characters. And the Joker, as... Anybody who's ever read a comic or, or seen The Dark Knight at some point in life will tell you that the Joker is more a concept than he is a character. I'm an idea. State of mind. Unlike the vast majority of Batman villains who all have these redeemable humanizing qualities, the Joker has none. And any time that we're shown a human side to the character it's pretty much retconned that he might just be full of shit. The guy's a sociopath. He could read anybody like a book, and he plays upon people's vulnerabilities and weaknesses. Case in point, Harley Quinn. To say that the Joker's an unreliable narrator is kind of an understatement. So the fact that they would reference this character and not give him an established backstory was awesome for me. It made me feel like the people who were running this show really understood the character. However, as you're about to learn, it wasn't creative integrity that stopped them from using the Joker. To their credit, the show did go with their initial idea. On multiple occasions in the show's first season, there was a potential Joker. The first episode of the show had a nervous comedian, who could very easily be the Joker plucked from the Killing Joke story. There was a very familiar sinister laugh played in the background during scenes at Arkham. So, you know, there were Easter eggs. They, they, they were true about that. I mean, granted, they did initially say that there would be a Joker in every episode, and, and that wasn't the case. It was more like every couple episodes, there was, there was a possibility of one. But, you know, I was satisfied nonetheless. Why not just include the Joker? I mean, yeah, creatively, I guess this kind of works out, but you mean to tell me that they're not going to use the biggest villain in all of Batman history? He even has his own movie. It's a license to print money. You mean to tell me? That they're not going to use the Joker officially? He's the most famous criminal in all of Gotham City. He's a big name. He'd probably put some butts in seats. And honestly, how, how does anybody even make a Batman product without the Joker? Comic book writers sure as hell don't know how to do that. So why not use him? Well, the answer isn't all that complicated. Simply put, they couldn't. They straight up 
couldn't. You see, the show did have Warner Brothers owned characters in it, but it was a series that was made by Fox, meaning that Fox didn't have access to the entire DC universe. Basically, an agreement was made that there were certain characters the show just couldn't use. And at the tip top of that list was, you guessed it, the Joker. So this whole choose your own Joker was a cop out to appease Batman fans and to still abide by Warner Brothers rules and regulations. Pretty sneaky, sis. Cameron Monaghan of Shameless fame was contracted to guest star on an episode of the show. He's basically signed on to be another throwaway you know who. Just some nobody who one day may be a somebody. Except the thing was, he was good. Like, like, like really good. Maybe even a little bit too good. <laughs> Looks like the bitch got me with a zinger in the end. Been banging a clown the next one. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna need a lot more of this! <laughs> Fans of the show immediately flocked his portrayal of the character. You were quite the showman. Thank you. Always nice to be appreciated. And he was very quickly proclaimed the real deal in a sea of imposters. I'm also sure it didn't help matters that the marketing for this episode spoiled the reveal and heavily implied that he was the series official version of this character. But even if nobody saw those, any Batman fan could tell you that this was a clown without his face paint. Jerome Valesco was very much the Urkel of Gotham. God, I, I, I can't escape that kid. I just, all the time. He just always comes up. It's nothing, he just keeps coming up. His mere presence revitalized the series and it brought a whole lot of new eyes to the product. This isn't an exaggeration. Those who weren't paying attention to Gotham pre-Jerome were heavily invested post-Jerome. <laughs> post-Jerome. Why does my mind work like this? And those who were already paying attention to Gotham became obsessed. This was a big deal. You know, I'll even go out of my way to say that there were a lot of people who were genuinely beginning to enjoy Jerome more than they were the rest of the show. Which really has to be seen as a compliment because the show was fine without him. So, slowly but surely, the show began to embrace that. After coming out of the crazy closet in his debut episode, you know, what with admitting to murdering his nagging mother, the madness was only then further amplified in his follow-up appearances. The performance Cameron gave really blew me away. And it is in my personal opinion that he is perfect in this role. That is not to jest the wonderful clowns who have come before him. I mean, I love Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix as the character. But both of those seem to be a reinterpretation of the original character. A and they're great. I, I really do enjoy new takes on old characters. And those two had phenomenal performances. But Cameron here, Cameron is just straight up playing the Joker. And, and look, I, I know this might be one of my controversial takes here, but I, I'll say it. He's up there with Mark Hamill for me. Just, just his tone, the inflection in his voice, his mannerisms, the way that he goes about everything. Everything about this performance is everything I ever wanted to see in a Joker performance. I used to be a great whistler. <laughs> Give me an O. Give me an N. Give me another O. What does that spell? What are you gonna do to me, Jerome? Come on. I'm gonna kill you. Of course. But first, I'm gonna drive you mad. Give me a smile. <laughs> I mean, seriously, his laugh, his movements, everything about this is the Joker. And yet, legally, he couldn't be. The character could never actually become the Joker, despite very blatantly already being the Joker. Sure, he didn't use the Joker name, and yet he didn't have green hair or bleached white skin. But come on now, that, that's the guy. That's our man right there. I, I can identify him out of any lineup. That's the man, officer. 
and the inevitable only became more and more obvious with the passing of time. Season by season, they were just furthering the perception. Jerome's wardrobe reflected the Joker's various wardrobe changes. His face was cut off, as was the Joker's in some comics that I choose not to acknowledge. He started using Joker gas. He was given his trademark grin. Guy began recreating famous Joker poses. Hell, he even began quoting the Joker. We all could go insane with just one bad day. Not to mention, he was just freely giving his card out like who the hell he was. Even though the show wants to claim that he isn't, this man was the Joker in everything but name. How they somehow managed to dodge enough lawsuits to be able to complete the show is beyond me. The brand flat out told you no. And you thought, well, I don't know. I, I feel like there's a little bit of a gray area there. Can't you do something? Afraid not. I am with Mr. Valeska 100%. The show managed to cover their own ass. By insisting that Jerome wasn't actually the series version of the character, he was its predecessor. The precursor to the actual Joker. They even killed him off for a time being, and began a cult in his name. Which I have some mixed feelings about. See, I like the concept of the Joker having followers of sorts. It fits the narrative of Joker being a concept rather than a character. I'm an idea. He is a madness that creates more madness in its wake. Joker is an absolutely awful, irredeemable character, but he is strangely charismatic and his presence is otherworldly. So I can absolutely buy into other people following in his footsteps. Batman Beyond comes to mind, where years after the Joker's disappearance, there's still an entire gang called Jokers causing chaos in his name. However, I don't really buy this concept when it's altered like this. Insisting that the Joker, the actual Joker, is actually some nutjob trying to recreate someone else's crimes, it really diminishes the character. Joker isn't the character to take the torch. He's the one who lights it and then burns down your living room. He's not some no-name copycat. There's a reason he's so reviled and infamous. It's because Gotham City has never seen a force like him before. And that's saying something, because Gotham City is a city filled with icemen, furries, scalies, a dude who commits crimes and then tells you how he did it. I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Even given that climate, Joker still stands out amongst the rest. Having the Joker as a follower goes against everything the character stands for, and it lessens his importance and the overall impact he has on Harley Quinn and on Batman, and on Gotham. But to the show's credit, I think they did realize this at some point in time. And if it wasn't that, and if they didn't realize their own creative faults when reworking the origin of the character, then they just understood that Gotham fans wouldn't settle for anything less but Cameron Monaghan in the role. Even if he's not technically the Joker, his performance is still the closest we've ever come to the character in live-action form. So he was brought back and he continued to be presented as the show's answer to the character. All while the show executives continued to deny he was the clown in question. Cameron really hit it out of the park with his guest appearances on the show, and it seemed all but inevitable that one day, e even if we don't get to see it because, you know, agreements won't let us, it seemed inevitable that he was Joker-bound. If only that was the fucking case. And right about here's where I'll be stopping this episode. Because this is truly a story that needs to be told in two parts. Some of you may know, I died. Uh-oh. Hang on to your hats, folks, because you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I'm the clown prince of crime, and that was the prince of personality, the Infuso. Or so he says. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole and you too want to become a V-tard, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow the man on Twitter, because it's not stalking if it's on the internet after all. <laughs> Join the fun by joining the Discord. If for some strange reason you want to show support, and I don't know why you would, and if you have a dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, where you can request videos, get exclusive content, and early access to scheduled videos. Or head to his PayPal, where you can buy the shirts. Oh, aren't those lovely?
And just remember, if you're not tuning in, you're missing out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One more.